Hey guys and girls, it's David with Beagles on Fire. Uh, had sent out a video yesterday explaining to y'all I was excited about a new thing, idea that I'd had. And we've done some stuff in the past with uh, Fruit of the Spirit. We've done some stuff with, uh, you know, types of equipment Beaglers use. I thought it'd be cool to, it's hard to always come up with a new idea, so I thought it'd be cool to just start going through some of the dogs at my kennel and giving y'all a little history of their background, who they're out of, kind of like a pedigree type deal. And also talk about the dog so you would know the dog a little bit better and what we can learn out of that. And so the first dog I wanted to start with was a dog that's an older dog. Um, she's been around a good while. And since it's Mother's Day tomorrow, I thought I'd start off with this one because she is she's been the mother to a lot of dogs. This is Georgia. And Georgia looks a whole lot different than she did when she was younger. Yes, that's all gray and white in the face. She used to be solid red. Uh, and if you look back on my page where it says our females, you'll see a young picture of her. And she was beautiful back in the day. I'm not saying she's not now. We'll talk about that a little later. But I uh, wanted to give you a little bit about her. Georgia, first of all, the name Georgia. Where did I get that? Well... I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan, and I wanted a dog named Georgia. Simple as that. This is the one I picked. There's actually three in this litter that we kept. One was named Dan. One was named Little Ann. My, my son had been watching where the red fern grows, and he picked out uh, Little Ann and Dan as a name for some of them. And he actually picked out the bigger of the two females to name Little Ann. And I was trying to give him name this one, Little Ann, the other one, Georgia. But he switched it around, and it's okay. It all fit just perfect, and everything worked out. But Georgia was born on... April 29th of 2012. It is now May of 23. This dog's 11 years old. And uh, her sister, Lil Ann, passed away uh, not, not two months ago, but uh, about 12 months, uh, 14 months ago, 15 months ago, back in February of 22. And um, both of them were super rabbit dogs uh, up until, uh, Lil Ann up until about the last few months of her life would still run. Uh, Georgia can still go and run, but we limit her a lot because she's getting older. She is out of her sire, which is the dad, was Buster. And the dam, which is the mother, was Brownie. And Brownie was out of Poncho and Cricket. Uh, so if you go back, and those of you that knew Poncho, and some of you knew Cricket, Cricket was the dog that produced Maggie and Lightning and Brownie and... Uh, the list goes on and on and on about some of the dogs that Cricket produced. Um, but Georgia's out of that, uh, you know, granddaughter to Cricket, and her mother's name was Brownie. And so Georgia has had several litters in the past. We don't breed her anymore, obviously, for age. But Georgia is the mother of Sweetie Pie, Savannah, Atlanta, Ruby, Reba, just to name some. All of those dogs there, uh, some of them are deceased. Uh, Sweetie Pie's deceased, but uh, Savannah, Atlanta, and Ruby, I've sold those to some other people as they got older. Reba, I still have at the kennel. And so I just thought I'd take, uh, take a second to tell you about Buster. Buster was a nine-month-old dog the first time I seen him, and he actually, uh, my Uncle Charlie had him. Uncle Charlie had a running buddy that was constantly in and out of rabbit hunting. One day he would come over and he'd say, I'm done. Here's my box. Here's my collars. Here's my dogs. And three weeks later, he'd want to get back in. And I knew that about him. And so I told Charlie, I said, Charlie, not to be ugly, but I said, you know the way that guy is. I said, he's going to get these dogs back and he's going to sell that buster dog. And that buster dog is a mighty fine dog. He's a really, really good dog in the making. Uh, going to be a great dog. And so my uncle kept him and... And uh, long story short, we uh, Lightning was a dog that was out of cricket that I had let my uncle run in Kentucky. And um, my uncle said, then she came into heat. He said, what you want to do? What do you want to meet? And I said, I don't need to meet you anywhere. He said, just breed her. He said, to what? And I said, to Buster. And so uh, Buster had gotten older at that time. And so he bred. And Lightning got pregnant and I got her and brought her down here and she had nine puppies and I thought okay she's done and that's good puppies started dying off and long story short we had two puppies still inside lightning and got her to the vet but uh, she died on the operating table I've learned a lot since then uh, we lost a really nice four-year-old finished dog there because uh, because there was some puppies inside her that had not been born and uh, unfortunately but I was not gonna give up 
So when Brownie came into heat, I, uh, I bred that one back to Buster and uh, had the puppies and they came out and we had, uh, we had some solid red ones and I'd been wanting to get red out of that cricket bloodline and that's what, uh, what we had done uh, by, by breeding Buster. And uh, there was a couple of unique things about it. When we would breed, as little Ann got older, when we would breed her and we would breed little Ann, I bred them typically to Junior. And then after Junior got too old to breed, I think I bred them to Hunt the last few times. But when I bred, everything that come out of little Ann was solid red. Never, ever a dog that wasn't solid red. This two-tone uh, red bone coonhound look uh, was what I got out of little Ann. Now, Georgia here, she would, she would throw you solid red, red and white, or red ticks, which was odd since they were litter mates out of the same thing, bred to the same male. It was kind of funny how that always happened, and I probably raised five or six litters out of each one of those. Uh, and so they usually had big litters, uh, eight to 11 pups a lot of times. And so I um, just thought I'd go through here and tell you some things about Georgia uh, as her name, uh, taking the letters of her name and giving you some different characteristics of her. So Georgia, the first G, stands for genuine. She has absolutely been a genuine rabbit dog. Uh, just absolutely everything that, that you would want. Uh, genuinely what you're looking for in a, in a rabbit dog. The E was energetic. She, she was full of energy. Always out searching and hunting and didn't wear down much. She just was always on the go and full of hustle and hunt, which is passed on to her puppies. Uh, the, the O in Georgia, I, I got is original. She did something that was original to her, and I have not seen it since in any dog. Hadn't seen it before in any dog. She would have probably been a really good uh, field trial dog if I was into field trialing because she would give a whine, like a warning. When she whined one time, she's fixing to jump a rabbit. She smelled it, she whined. And then she jumped the rabbit. You could tell the guys, not that any of us was jump shooting or nothing, but you'd be like, guys, get ready. We're fixing to have a race. And that's because you heard Georgia whine. And I've not had a dog since then that's ever done that. So that was the original thing about her to me that made me say original. The R is she was real. Absolutely real. Um, this dog here, I had a dog that was, uh, was, was young. And when this dog was young... 14 months old, I had him out, and this other dog liked to get on a deer, and I uh, didn't know that until I'd been out with him, and I thought, oh man, this is going to mess up these dogs. This is back before we had GPS, and all I had was just regular trash breaker, and before I could even start hitting dogs on it, because I figured young dogs going to go, at 14 months old, this dog right here, come back, followed by the two Finnish dogs that I had, but she was the first one to come back and tell on them at 14 months old and never ran any trash after that at all. That was when she was broke at 14 months old. Don't see that real often, but she was absolutely real in everything she did like that. The other G, I've got gentle and gifted. She was a very gifted rabbit dog, but she's gentle. I don't think I have ever known of Georgia to get in a fight in the pen uh, definitely never started one, never growls at dogs, just a gentle, gentle dog. Uh, Avery can go in there and, you know, put a, put a lead on her and drag her around, and she's just gentle as she can be, and a very good mother, uh, gentle with her puppies. The eye in Georgia I've got is in tune, in tune with me and the other dogs. I mean, she picked up at a very early age what I was trying to do with the tone button to get her to come in. She picked up real quick with the other dogs that when they opened up, uh, they had a rabbit. She'd go to them and stay with them. She picked up when I would make my call that I'd seen a rabbit. She figured that out real quick and came back. And the A, which is one of the characteristics that I want to zero in on, was I put authentic. And you're like, well, I wrote down here, what is the meaning of authentic? Authentic means genuine, which we said is a G. Bonafide, meaning being actually and exactly what is claimed. This dog here was everything that I just said she was. Um, it implies fully trustworthy as according with fact. In other words, it's factual. It's a fact that when you say this about her, uh, that, that she was authentic. Um, well, like I said, she was trustworthy. Back when we didn't have the collar systems that we have today, I just had six dogs on a, on a system, on a trash breaker. 
And so I wanted to run a lot of young dogs. I could trust this dog so much that I could run her without a collar. And she would come back, tell on them if they're running trash. You call her, she'd come right back. And if she came back, it was a fact they were not running a rabbit. If she was in there, it was a fact they were running a rabbit, no matter where they went. And you know, uh, when you say someone is authentic, in general terms, when you're talking about someone who's authentic, it means that they are genuine, honest, and real. An authentic person is someone who's comfortable in their own skin and they don't feel the need to put on a front to fit in and be accepted by others. They know who they are and they don't try to hide it. Now, I ask you, are you authentic? Are you real? Are you honest? Are you trustworthy? That's the characteristic that we can learn from a dog like this that is trustworthy and real and honest. Her mouth was honest. She was tight mouth. Like I said, give that warning whine. And it would, and then she would jump it. And uh, you know, when you're a, when you're talking about people, you want to be a person who's authentic. You want to be someone that, when you open your mouth, what you say is fact, not a liar. You want to be someone who's real in all you do, and you want to be someone that people can trust. You want to be trustworthy. If you're not having those qualities and characteristics in your life, you need to change and become someone who is that way, who is authentic. That was the message I wanted to learn from Georgia here. And as you look, you see the outside appearance of Georgia. Not real beautiful anymore. Gotten older, kind of fading, getting gray in the ears, getting gray in the face, getting gray on the legs. But you know what makes this dog beautiful is what was inside of her. The grit, the, the energy, the drive. And now if I carry her out, she still will run. She's gotten a lot more loose mouth, which happens as they get older. She's not as sharp as she once was on that. And you know, it's Mother's Day, tomorrow's Mother's Day, and I just wanted to say, your mom may be getting gray. She may not look like she did when she was a younger girl, uh, but she's still beautiful because of what's inside. The outside changes. Remember, God says man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Everything that's inside them, that don't change. They might, they might not remember what they once could remember. They may not look the same on the outside as they once looked. They may be graying and fading and getting older, not have as much energy. But that fire still burns inside them to be your mother. So pick up the phone, call your mom, tell her Happy Mother's Day. To all you moms out there, thanks for all you've done. Just like Georgia hadn't have done what she's done to produce what she's produced, we wouldn't have today. You mothers have produced children that are in the world today and hopefully they're carrying on the traditions that you hold near and dear and the and that, that they're becoming honest people and being honest people authentic people real and trustworthy and honest and that's what we hope for all of our children but i know that's what you mothers wish so from beagles on fire happy mother's day i hope y'all got something out of this the next dog we're going to talk about is going to be ugga what a dog that one is and we will we will talk about him on the next uh the next one of these that we do Hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got a dog out of Georgia, if you've hunted with Georgia, if you've got some offspring of Georgia and you want to post a picture in the comments or talk about anything about Georgia pups that you've got or grand pups or anything out of her bloodline that you've got, feel free to do so. And uh, it's trying to be informative of letting people know what's kind of behind some of these dogs that we start and sell. Hope you've enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day.